Dr. Rick Jacoby here. Let's talk about stem cells. I've talked about cholesterol. I've talked about fat. I've talked about sugar. I've talked about all the causes that we know as humans causing disease. But we really haven't talked about stem cells. What are they? Why do they work? Why are they effective? Why are they safe? Yet we have no national consensus to use these. So let me give you a little background with myself and my quest to find the solution for stem cells. Now, I've been doing stem cells for over 15 years in, in the United States, but recently the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, outlawed some of these products such as amniotic fluid and placental fluid and membranes to use in disease. So they use a classification called a 351. So they've made those products a drug. So if you want to use them, you must go into a new drug application, which is called an IND, with a, um, a reputable research institution to prove that those substances work. That costs hundreds of millions of dollars, will take 10 years to prove what we already know as safe and effective products. But having said that, they did leave a classification which is called a 361. And 361 does allow the umbilical tissue, which is the supportive tissue, which is called Wharton's jelly. In my opinion, that is okay to use in the United States if it is used under this classification. So Wharton's jelly is a protective tissue for the umbilical cord. It must be used in a homologous use, and that word means like for like. So if the umbilical cord is a conduit of the artery, nerve, and vein, and the supportive tissue is the Wharton's jelly, then I believe any neurovascular bundle, artery, nerve, and vein, supportive tissue, Wharton's jelly, could be used for things such as carpal tunnel, diabetic neuropathy, and things of that nature. So that is what I am presently doing. However, you cannot use injectables or uh, intravenous applications of stem cells in the United States. So you ne need to go out of the country. And that is really the problem here. There's a great clinic in Panama founded by Dr. Neil Reardon, who was originally from Scottsdale, two blocks away from where I practiced. I've been to his clinic in Panama. He treats all kinds of different inflammatory nerve issues, such as autism, such as MS, same things I'm talking about, but now he's using umbilical tissue, IV. You can get that there. You can also get it in lots of different countries throughout the world, including Mexico. And I was just recently in Mexico at the Dream Body Clinic. I got IV stem cells. If you go to my website and YouTube, you'll see me sitting there getting stem cells, having a conversation with the director. There's no safety issues. It's safe. It's effective. The question is, why is it not being used in the United States? And the answer comes back because we need more research. And we do need more research. But in my new book, Unglued, I disclose a document that I have, which is public knowledge, from the U.S. Senate in 2003, conducted by Dr. Not Dr., but John McCain, Senator J John McCain, on the non-embryonic stem cell research, 2003, that's 20 years ago, 17 different scientists, one of which was Joanne Kurtzberg, who I know and met at several different meetings. She's treating autism with that type of stem cells, and she's treating muscular dystrophy with the same substance. She showed 
slides and movies of kids who couldn't speak autism with umbilical tissue, and they were speaking, multiple uh, d dystrophy, muscular dystrophy, kids who couldn't walk were walking. The senator's comments at that committee meeting, now this is 20 years ago, it's a miracle. Well, the miracle is, why is it not publicly available if it's such a miracle? I know we need more research, but that's an excuse. We are slow walking the cure. It's outrageous that we have to leave the United States to go get the research that we produced in the United States and get it out of the country. That's scandalous, as Steve Forbes says.